It's a lovely evening in this beautiful Dutch garden and I would like to come back once more to this encounter with the Father in darkness, in the darkness of our lives, encounter with our Father in the trials of our lives, in places where we don't want to go, where we don't want to have to prove ourselves, where we don't want to be alone. This meeting with the Father, which Jordan Peterson has discovered and describes so beautifully. And we've seen that this represents something very, very crucial, uh, very important in our moral life. In our moral life where we look for transcendence. It's part of our religious being. We use the virtues that we've learned from our fathers to go beyond what our fathers have done with the virtues he taught us. This is much more precise than actually what Jordan Peterson describes and that he um, encourages us to investigate. But it corresponds to something that has been seen before, that has been used before to describe the real challenge of life. It's part of our religious experience. Because when um, father and son meet each other in the darkness, the darkness that the father has known also, in these trials and the fa and and the son goes further than the father has ever gone but with everything that he learned from the father then in fact the son glorifies the father he honors the father he really confirms the fatherhood of his father because he is like united with his father in his moral life in his human life of acting as an adult adult person in this communion with his father in what he has received and what he is giving now he he they, they, they are they are united in a common search of god in a common search of everything of the only real father uh, the uh, ultimate father the first father maybe not the only real father, but the father that is at the origin um, of, of all fatherhood, because all fathers are real. The, the original father, the creating almighty father is, is a real father, but there are real fathers in life too. And it's a very great gift to have had a real father who has exercised his fatherhood in a truthful, and realistic way. But when father and son are united in such a way, not only does the son save the father, save him from growing old and weak, from, from dying, the son saves the father from dying in his fatherhood by, by acting in such a way that he glorifies the father by doing even more than the father has ever done they there is a common search and also the son who rescues the father and that is like the moral sense the deepest moral sense of what jordan peterson is trying to figure out and it it is it is a very important thing of our life it gives it gives the deepest meaning of the trials that we go through in our lives. It's part of our religious life. And we can give to this darkness uh, a meaning in this religious life. And it is very important to stress here that it is the religious life. It's the search, the universal and natural search of man, um, the search 
for a, a God, an almighty God. It is religion. It is natural. Man, through his spiritual soul and through his embodiment in this creation, he is always sort of, even secretly, in a secret way, in a hidden way, he is searching for the absolute source of everything and is searching for the answer. That's the religious soul of man and the religious longing of man, which is not specifically Christian, it is specifically human. And it is very difficult in our times to, to stress that because, especially in our Western culture, um, this religious sense has been lost very, very badly. It seems almost, um, well, almost something completely uh, ridiculous to talk about that. For some spiritual reasons, which we cannot uh, elaborate now, the West has completely lost track of the religious part of the soul of man. The problem is that if you do that, then Christ Christianity also becomes a completely warped way of life. You don't understand Christianity if you don't understand what is religion. But anyway, this, this saving the Father through your actions, which you do by, by the virtues that you've learned from the Father, Saving the Father, because the Father can see this happening. That goes beyond death in a certain way. That's very important to see that. It is religious. But I want to make the step towards Christianity, because in Christianity there is something more than that. We've seen this, um, let's say, these crucial moments of fatherhood in our religious life, in our natural religious life, moral life. But for the Christian, there is something more. And we see that in, in chapter 5 of the Gospel of St. John, from verse 16 onwards. And in fact, you have to read the whole chapter because it is about, about a power. It's about um, the Father. It's about the power of the sun, the power that goes beyond death. Just read that chapter, you will see. But uh, starting from verse 16, uh, Jesus says a few amazing things. He says, I will only do what I see the Father doing. I only realize the things that I see the Father realizing, and I realize them alike. Likewise, I, I realize them uh, in, 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 in a way like him. What the Father does, I do likewise. What I see the Father doing, I do likewise. Now the thing is, when you look at the life of Jesus, you don't see the Father doing much. It's nice to believe that Jesus is united to the Father, that he sees the Father. But that he does what he sees the Father doing is a very mysterious thing. Apparently, Jesus sees what we do not see. Not just the fact that he sees the Eternal Father, because he's Son of Father, of the Eternal Father. He, he is God himself, so he must see the Father continuously, even in death. But even in the world, the Son of Man sees the Father acting. So he sees something that we don't. And that is very important to remember, because Jesus, by being the God who became man, he penetrates into the deepest darkness of our lives. Jesus knows our darkness. He has lived our darkness. And so in our human darkness, in the darkest moments of our life, where there is no hope, no faith, no realism. Maybe only absurd fantasy and imagination. And fantasy that 
turns us into slaves. We are no longer free if we live in our imagination, if we are gaming and imagining all our lives. We are no, not really alive. Even in the greatest darkness, without any reality to hold on to, no purpose to hold on to, even there the light of Christ penetrates. And he sees with that light, he sees the Father acting. And he is acting alike. And that is for the Christians something new. Because here you are not at the level of doing something in darkness, in, in the difficulty, in the difficulties, the, 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 the moments of trial in your life, doing something with the virtue that you have received from the Father through learning. But it's like you're immediately united to the Father through Jesus Christ. In your trials there is a light. You cannot see it, but you can believe in it. And you can see it with the eyes you can see it with the eyes of your faith and with the eyes of your hope. In our deepest darkness, Jesus is seeing the Father. He is immediately united to the Father. Not just by an act of virtue, but by seeing. And immediately, from seeing, as immediate as the light in which he sees the Father, Jesus is acting. And that is the real Christian hope that we have in this world. Whatever happens, Jesus sees the Father in us, especially in our darkness. And he acts immediately. He and the Father are united in abiding in us, in acting upon us, in acting with us. And that is the Christian dimension of this crucial moment where Christ comes to meet us in our darkness so that we can meet our Father in darkness, in our darkness. So that's two aspects. Um, of, the dar of, of these dark moments of our life where we give a meaning, where we, where we touch what is the real purpose of our lives, to act with what we have received, in fact, as an answer on what we have received. That's like our moral growth in faith in these moments of trials. But there's more than just the moral life, our life of growing towards God, of growing in strength, the strength of hope, growing in purity, in, in, in faith, growing ever more radically given to God. There's more than that. That's our growth, that's our moral personality growing towards God. There is also this mysterious touching at the end. It's as immediate as the lightning that strikes from heaven, strikes the earth from heaven. It is this amazing moment where we, beyond faith, hope and love, we touch the fact of being seen by the Father, being immediately seen. Uh, it's as if the face of God reflects on us. And that is something that we can remind ourselves of when we are in these trials. That's beyond the moral religious experience. It is, in fact, already the moment when, beyond this world, we touch the, the end of this world. When we meet already, although it's only in faith, when we meet the Father face to face.